Al Medina School is fighting to survive. Its principal, deputy principal, and head of administration have resigned. It's accused of having been taken over by Islamic hardliners. Three government agencies are investigating. The government could shut it down. Three of the school's governors have decided to give their first interview after weeks of allegations in the press. Much has been made of the school's dress code and the fact that female teachers are required to wear a headscarf or hijab. Um, the very first question we ask is that to everybody, Muslim and non-Muslim, that would, 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 uh, um, would, you, uh, would you be prepared to cover your hair if you came into the school as part of the uniform policy? And as to this date, all those who have come to that interview point, none of them have ever refused. Even those who, even those who have succeeded and got a job and those who haven't. Why should they have to wear a headscarf if they're not Muslim? Okay. Let's just talk about uniform. You don't expect a surgeon not to wear his surgeon gear at the point he's doing surgery. You don't expect a dentist not to wear his overalls when he's doing his dentistry. You don't but expect... You're not saying um, let me, let you me, can't teach maths unless you've got a headscarf. We're not, we're not saying that at all. What we're saying is we're proud of the uniform that we have both in, um, in terms of what we want for our children. How do you know that there aren't women who are brilliant teachers who are not going to come and teach your school because you require them to wear a headscarf and they don't want to wear a headscarf. As an organisation, do we not have the right to stipulate our code of dress? We, we have chosen and we have sat down and this is the code of dress that we have adopted. If we look at an air hostess, for example, they may be required to wear certain headgear. The female air hostesses wear a different code of dress to the male ones. Now, we're not saying that they're discriminated against. That's a, a choice and that's a decision made by the business that this is the corporate image that we would like our female staff to present. And that's the decision that we made. But we're not saying that by uh, wearing the, the headscarf, you are changing your religious identity at all. What we're, what we're purely, sincerely and clearly saying is this is the code of dress that we would like our female members of staff to adopt. And this is the decision as an organization that we have made. Is it, is it possible to review that? Yes, it is. The government has told the school to write to all of its female staff and tell them they don't have to wear a hijab if it's in conflict with their religion or beliefs. But it's not the only issue bothering ministers. On Tuesday, the governors got a letter from Education Minister Lord Nash. He said Al Medina had manifestly breached its funding agreement, had failed to ensure pupils' safety, had an unacceptably poor standard of education and had been discriminating in its practices towards female staff and it accused the school of many and significant failures of financial management. Lord Nash has given them three weeks to comply with 17 requirements. Otherwise, funding will be terminated. Allegations have been made that girls have been forced to sit at the back of the class. Nobody is forced to do anything in this school. The allegations are unfortunate, but when it comes to the seating arrangements in the class, what we don't do, we don't have a boy-girl, boy-girl seating arrangement. So the way the classroom is designed, all of our children are treated equally. We have girls sitting at the front and at the back. We have boys sitting at the front and the back. There is no discrimination going on in this school whatsoever. When Al Medina opened last year, it said it would honour all faiths, but the government's concerned it's failing to do so. It's been reported that only one of the school's 400 pupils is non-Muslim. The governors were unable or unwilling to say how many of their children are non-Muslim. We are on a journey. There are things that, yeah, by all means, we have to improve, and we know that. But like everything else, it takes time. It takes time to nurture a flower. We're just coming out of a seedling point. We have to put and ensure that the right practices and the right teaching and learning is effective for it to turn into an attractive flower for people to come automatically to us and say, actually, I'm going to that school, not because it's a Muslim faith school, but because it's an excellent or a good school. The governors say there's been no financial mismanagement at the school. They're expecting that Ofsted will find the teaching inadequate, but they believe they can turn things around.